right, so I really want to dispel this myth about getting multiple bids from multiple contractors on an insurance claim. I know that there are some insurance companies out there that encourage you get X number of bids. Sometimes it might even tell you get five, six, seven bids and pick the middle one. Now, the first problem with that is it doesn't matter the quantity of estimates that you get. If the quality of those contractors aren't good, the low, the middle, the high, they're all going to be bad. It's like if, if I were to tell you, go find 10 contractors, 10 roofing contractors on Craigslist.com and pick the middle bid that you get. If you're finding a, a contractor on Craigslist, it's probably going to be bad regardless of how much it costs you. Okay. The other thing to keep in mind is that just because it's a low cost up front doesn't mean it's going to be a low cost over the long period of time. Okay. So that's the first thing. Quantity does not equal quality. Okay. The next thing around this myth of getting multiple bids, on, especially on an insurance claim, is that it really doesn't matter what, as a contractor, I bid on an insurance claim. It really doesn't matter. Because the insurance company is going to have their own estimate. They're going to come up with their own figures and their own values. I could bid you a dollar. I can get your roof done for a dollar. And it doesn't matter if the next guy says a hundred bucks, next guy says a thousand, next one says ten thousand. When your insurance company says we'll cover it for twelve thousand, all of us are moving our bid up to twelve thousand. The only one that might not move their bid is the one that's at 15,000. He might not drop his down to 12,000. And the reason for that is if he's at uh, just north of that $12,000 mark that the insurance company is claiming they're going to cover it for, it might be because they know something the insurance company might have missed. And if they're higher than the insurance company, then they have the freedom to go figure out what is it that you missed and let's make sure that you get your the coverage that you deserve. Okay? Now, if I'm under... And, and I'm going to bid it out honestly regardless. So I'm going to put together my own retail quote regardless. Retail is, is a non-insurance quote. It's if you wanted to get your house done out of pocket. Okay. I'm going to put a retail quote together. I'm going to compare it to what the insurance company says. But that doesn't mean that's what it's going to end up being. Okay. Let's say, for example, that my retail quote on your roof is $10,000. Insurance company says we're going to cover for $12,000. Great. I as a good contractor, I'm not going to say, I'm going to pocket that extra $2,000. Cool. Hey, happy day. I've got extra money in my pocket, bigger profit margins. No, I, I have profit margins that I want to protect, but if I'm good at $10,000 for my profit margin, then let's get you an upgrade. If your insurance company is saying, I'll do 12,000. Great. Let's see where we can upgrade you. I'm still protected. I'm still fine. I'm not going to be greedy and say, give me an extra $2,000 on this project. No, Let's give you a better product. Now, if I'm at $10,000 and the insurance company says, we're going to cover this for $8,000, I'm not going to move my $10,000 quite yet. First, I might drop it and see, all right, how does that really affect our profit margins? But the reality is that I know my numbers and I know what a house needs. So if the insurance company is coming in a little low, they probably missed something. And it's something that we should probably find and address to make sure that you're getting the proper quality of work that you deserve. So when your insurance company or anybody else says, get five bids, it's an insurance job, cool, get five bids. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Now, I might put together a preliminary estimate for the insurance company because this process can take some time, but that's only effective if that preliminary estimate is built in the same language that your insurance company is going to build their estimate out because at that point we're taking it upon ourselves to do the work we're pulling all the measurements we're taking all the photos we're putting all the materials together into that one quote that one estimate and then we're going to build it out in the same software that your insurance company uses and give that to them and say hey this is what we found i really hope you're going to be close to that we're right on it because we did all this work for you and this is what it should be and that might help us avoid supplements down the line but that doesn't always mean that there, there isn't going to be additional work to do later on. But I say all of that to say that if you if you want all of your contractors, you want to get three bids and compare them all, contrast them all, 
it's all going to be for naught as soon as the insurance company releases their numbers and says what they're willing to cover it for. Because we're going to want to get as close to that as possible or identify why they're low. Either raise it to meet them and give you some upgrades, or we're going to have to either lower ours, unfortunately, or figure out where they're missing so they can up, up, um, increase theirs to match our numbers. So again, it really, it really doesn't matter. For example, if the insurance company says, let's cover this for $10,000, I'm at $12,000, the other guy's at $8,000, and you're like, I want to go with $8,000 because, you know, if, if insurance is covering $12,000 and, and this guy comes in at $8,000, I get the difference, the $4,000. That's not how that works, okay? Whatever you invoice the insurance company, insurance company's going to match. So if they're at $10,000, I'm at $8,000 and you go with me and I don't increase it to $10,000 to get you that upgrade to max out what they're willing to cover and I invoice them for $8,000, they're not, they're going to release $8,000 minus your deductible. They're going to leave it at that. They're not going, they're going to pocket that extra money because in their case, their eyes are like, oh, well, it only costs you that much to do it. Well, then, all right, we'll go with your numbers. Let's, let's go with what you can do. And as if the contractor does that and it's going to cost $8,000, and they bill them $10,000 just so that you can pocket that $2,000, that's fraud. So you want to be wary of that, okay? Don't go with a low bid because you think you're going to come out on top. That's fraud, okay? So the best case scenario is let the contractor come out there, do their inspection, identify if there's damage, advise you on opening a claim or not, have the insurance company come out, do their own inspection, build out their estimate, and the contractor insurance company is going to compare and contrast. We're going to find where we can meet middle ground. We're going to come to an agreement. And now we're going to do the work that you need to get done on your house. That's the best way to go about it. So don't fall into that trap of I need five bids. I need to pick the middle. I need the low guy. Don't fall into that trap. Quality is far, far better than quantity. And that's even the case on retail jobs as well.